Sarah, that mule hadn't got a chance. He? He? Is that you? Really? Well, why not? <laughs> where did you come from? I mean, how in the world... Did I know where to find you? Yes. Well, I asked the right questions. I heard you were doing mission work in this part of the country. And I managed to have business with the Roberts family. It's good to see you, Heath. Wonderful, really. Your uh, sister Jacob now. Sister Jacob, that's a, that's a funny name for a girl. <laughs> oh, I've always thought it was a fine old biblical name. Of course, if you don't like Jacob, you have to take that up with Isaac. Of course, if you don't like Isaac, you have to take it up with Abraham. And if you don't, it gets very complicated after that. So you're chasing. Oh, oh, we're cutting it out. Come on now. What was that for? No need to spell it out to you, Barkley. You know what that's for. I ought to use a gun on oh, you. Homer. Let's keep it legal the way we agreed. You're under arrest. For what? For assaulting my daughter. Are you listening to me? Listening to you? How can I help it? I'm entitled to face that girl, and you know it. I heard you the first four or five times. Well, then why hasn't she been brought here? Are you serious? Carla Roberts, brought from her father's house to face a wild-eyed rooster like you? Uh-huh. You've got a lot to learn, friend. You'll have a chance to face Carla at your trial. And if this is some kind of a joke, I'll laugh some other time. Mr. Barkley, you are now in Robertsville. You are not back in Stockton with your family to take charge of things for you. Something you just have to get used to. Now, is there anything else? I want to send a telegram. Get your piece of paper. No, I, I don't mean to say that Heath was ever saintly. Such a lie might bring the roof down on our heads. <laughs> but it, he was wild. He was he was unruly and. Like so many of the others, he, he was even willful at times. Thank you. But he was, um, he, he was... <clears throat> this is very difficult to say, sister. Yes, sister. He was never disrespectful in the way that they're trying to suggest. How long has it been since you last saw him? Four years. Four years? Oh, my. That's almost forever when you're young. Men change, you know. The world and the people in it, our poor selves included, are so rarely what we once hoped we might be. Yes, I, I understand that. But just the same, I, I don't believe that Carla Roberts is telling the truth. And I don't mean that's something that I can prove, but I mean, I just know it. I feel it. That just isn't something that Heath would do. Let's 
try to be realistic? How well did you know this young man? Well enough to have married him if I hadn't chosen to become a nun. I see. Sister, you'd have to have known Heath to, to understand. I mean, he, he, uh, he was wild and he was headstrong and, he, and sometimes he felt like he belonged to no one. And, of course, those were the times when he, he was most lost. But he, he was always gentle and almost unspeakably brave. Are you sure he couldn't have done this? Oh, yes, sister. I'm absolutely sure he couldn't have done it. Please, may I have your permission to go see him in the jail tomorrow? Do you think it's wise? <laughs> well, no, I'm not sure of that at all, but under the present situation with his family, a two or three day journey away, I, I think someone should be there with him. All right. Take Sister Martha with you. Thank you. Sister, what can I do for you? I'd like to see Mr. Barclay, please. Oh. Well, if you're going to pray for this young fellow, it might be a good idea to get an early start. Uh, what do you have in the basket? Some lunch. You do that frequently for prisoners, you know. Well, I wasn't looking for an argument. Just ten minutes now, please, sister. Thank you. Hello, Sarah. Hello, Heath. I might have known you'd come. I would not. Would you sit down? Thank you. Bad luck. First of all, I want you to know that what she said wasn't true. I was a guest at the Roberts house, and I talked to her, but that was all. I don't know why she would say something like that, except... Sarah, do you know Carla Roberts? Uh, yeah, I've seen her in town a few times. Would you say there was something, well, strange about her? I think that we're all strange sometimes. Well, yesterday, I rode out to the stables to look at some horses I came to buy. And don't ask me how she got there, or what she was doing there, but there was Carla. She, uh, she asked me to look at some saddles in the tack room. And I said, yeah, I'd look at the saddle. And she followed me inside. Well, we were alone, and she wasn't exactly dressed to go knocking around a barn. Sir, it's not easy for me to describe how she acted. Well, I mean, it's not something that you'd want to tell a nun. Well, if anything, she came after me. And I may not have been as polite as I should have been, but well, I got out of there. The next thing I knew, her father showed up at the mission with the sheriff. Do you believe me, Sarah? You don't have to persuade me, Heath. I believed you before you began. Thank you. Does your family know that you've been arrested? Well, I sent them a telegram. And I'm sure they know by now. My brother Jared, he's a lawyer. He's one of the best there is. He should get this whole thing cleared right up. I brought you something. Here. There's some um, coffee and sandwiches and pickles and oh, some of uh, Sister Benedict's angel food cake without the halos. Oh, you shouldn't have done that. Oh, it's nothing special. It looks good. Sure you won't have some? No, thank you. Actually, we made that uh, 
same lunch for a man that they hanged two weeks ago. Poor fellow. Wasn't much for praying. Sure had a good appetite. <laughs> I'm serious. He... <laughs> really, it's awful when you think about it. He ate every speck. <laughs> really? <laughs> Heaven forgive me for making such a morbid joke. Hey, how I'm glad you came, Sarah. <laughs> I'll come again if it's all right. Well, I'd be mighty disappointed if you don't. <laughs> Goodbye. Well, what was so funny? I, I don't think I could begin to explain the sheriff. I'm not sure I understand it myself. Jacob, come in, please. Thank you, Mr. Ross. What can I do for you? I'd like to speak to Carla, please. Why do you want to talk to her? I'm a friend of Heath Barclay's. I've known him for many years. You, a nun? Well, I wasn't a nun when I knew him. I bet you weren't. Mr. Roberts, I would like to speak to Carla because I believe that, well, at least there's been a misunderstanding. Sister Jacob, why don't you go back to Sister Benedict? You remind her and yourself that your mission's on my property and that it's there by my permission alone. I can't see what harm can come from my talking to Carla. She's up in her room and she's not feeling well. Oh, I'm sorry. Perhaps I could come back later. That won't be necessary. Mr. Roberts, Heath Barkley is not the kind of man who could harm your daughter. Isn't he? We'll see what a jury thinks tomorrow. Tomorrow? The trial is tomorrow? That's right. But his family can't possibly be here by then. At 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, Judge Jonah Bailey presiding. <laughs> May God forgive you. What's the matter with you? Nothing, Homer. Just hope you're not pressing this thing too fast. You don't think my daughter's good name is worth it? Or that I'm entitled to some satisfaction from that stinking barnyard rooster who came to my home as a guest? And all I'm trying to say, Homer, is that it might be a good idea not to get too excited. Well, for Carla's sake, even. For Carla is a, a very high-strung girl. Isn't it possible that young Barclay didn't intend all those things that she might have well, imagined? What are you trying to say? Not a thing, Homer. I'm just making a suggestion. There was that other incident I recall some years back. A young fellow from Deadlock. That's what? enough! Whatever you say, Homer. It's better. I like to see the right man for the right job, Herb. That badge looks fine on you, Herb. Mm-hmm. I know, Homer. I know. It's all right, dear. They've all gone. Oh, Papa. I'd never manage without you. What did the sister want? Oh, some nonsense or other. It's not worth talking about. It was the young one, wasn't it? Yes, it was the young nun. Poor thing. What did you say? Poor thing, I said. Poor girl. I see her watching me all the time, and... Well, I can't help wondering what she may be imagining. They lead strange lives, don't they? You're trembling. I know. It's thinking about tomorrow, Papa. All those people in the courtroom and, and having to look at him. Carla. Yes, Papa. That that 
thing with Barclay and you, that it was just the way you told me, wasn't it? You, Papa? You don't believe me. I believe you. I believe you. I, it, 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 what I meant was that I, I just wanted to help. Forgive me. I never doubted you for a minute. I want you to know that. You want him punished, don't you? Oh, yes, Papa. I want him punished. I want that more than anything in the world. Sorry, sister, I didn't intend to take so long. That's all right. I understand. I went for a long walk. I was hoping I could think of some solution to this. I can't believe that they're going to hold Heath's trial tomorrow. Sister, do you think that he has any chance at all? With Judge Bailey presiding over a hand-picked jury? I'm afraid that Pontius Pilate, with a sword at his throat, couldn't serve the truth more wretchedly. They could take ten years of his life. I know. But I fear that this time, sister, there is no solution. Nor any remedy you can rely on. Except prayer. I wonder... What, sister? Heaven forgive me, I don't know yet. I wish I knew how to advise you. Suppose we have some tea. Oh, Lord Jesus, help me. Look to myself, I'm apt to be such a fool. talk to you. Carla, come back. Carla. What's all the commotion? Your star witness was just gaping at me from the street. Carla? Oh, Sheriff, sure, you heard me. I wasn't whispering her name. You just never learn, do you? Learn what? To sit here and wait for a rigged up trial? There's nothing rigged up about it. Why don't you just relax? You're gonna have to be in that courtroom the first thing in the morning. Save your breath for the witness stand. Well, sister, you keep bringing my prisoner food every few hours. I'm afraid he's going to get too fat for his cell. Yes, that's a possibility, isn't it, Sheriff? Hey, be careful with that thing. No, I, I'm not doing this to be amusing. Would you drop your gun belt, please? Go on, you heard me, Sheriff. Drop it. Sir, are you sure you want to do this? Uh-huh. If you do, you're out of your mind. Sister, I'm warning you. Would you just get in the cell, please? Would you lock it here? Your meals are getting better. You'll regret this. All of you. Did you get the rig? Oh, in the livery stable. I hope you can pay for it when we get back. McAdoo! <laughs> Somebody out there get McAdoo! Get him in here, fast! Jailbreak! Jailbreak! Now, no smart remarks, McAdoo, from you or anybody else. Barkley? Barkley, your tin badger was at none. 
like a Halloween witch with a gun in her hand. Sister Jacob? Her? So I said it was, didn't I? You men are hereby deputized. Don't you think we ought to tell Mr. Roberts? Well, let's hope we don't have to tell Mr. Roberts. Anyway, we haven't got time now. dry goods store. I saw him escape with that nun. She was in the carriage with him. Sister Jacob? Well, where was the sheriff? He was locked in the jail, someone said. I heard him shout until the men got there. Oh, Papa, I'm so scared. Oh, come on, Carla, there's nothing to be frightened of. Oh, I'm ashamed of being so scared, Papa, but I keep remembering what he tried to do. I can't help it. What if he comes here? He's going to be too busy running for his life. I'm going to hunt him down like a, like an animal. And that young nun, I'm going to put her in jail where she belongs. I think we're getting no place fast. Too much country to cover. I'm going to go back and organize some more searching parties. You fellows go ahead on your own. You can tell Mr. Roberts? Well, what else can I do? You just be glad you're not me. Why are we stopped? Rest the horse. Can't exactly say we lost them. Our problem is that we just haven't been able to find them. I got Mac I don't want any of your smart remarks. I want Heath Barkley in that courtroom at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Either that or his dead body stretched out on the street for everyone to see. We'll have him there for you, Homer, if it's possible. You're going to make it possible. Look, Homer, you can't hide a team of horses and a rig and a nun in full regalia like a, a, a silver dollar. It's dark out there. We've got a lot of country to cover. I want to have at least a half a dozen searching parties at work by daybreak. That's the only thing I know what to do. And then stop your talking. Organize your search parties. Here, I brought these men. Deputize them, use them as you need them. I'll pay their wages. You men are hereby deputized. I expect to use all of you, maybe a dozen more in groups of three and four. I'll let you know where I want you stationed at dawn. Well, you men can go now. We'll see you at daybreak. You warmer? Much warmer, thank you. Don't you think we should move on? Well, the horse can use the rest. So can you. Sarah, why are you taking this chance? I think that should be perfectly obvious. So you don't have to face Mr. Roberts' own judge and jury. I'll have you railroaded off to jail before your family can even get to Robertsville. 
You'll be safe at Paco's until they get here. But don't you realize they could put you in jail for helping a prisoner escape? Well, it was a matter of conscience. I hope. What do you mean, you hope? Well, it's, uh, it's often difficult looking back to be certain of any motive, important or petty. Whether the thing that you did is really what you ought to have done, or is it simply just what you wanted to do? Being honest about those things is really what conscience is all about, I guess. You're not like anybody in the whole world, are you, sir? That could be a comfort to many. <laughs> My superiors in particular. Let's talk about you. Me? Yes, you. Last time I saw you, you were driving a stage. What happened after that? Well, I guess you might say things just went along for a while. I had some lumber and mining jobs. Did more than my share of herding cattle. Nothing exciting. Nothing for the history books. Main thing is I... I found a family. And learned how to belong. I guess you might say that was the biggest. The biggest and the best. I'm so glad for you, Heath. You could have been a part of it, sir. Uh, that horse must be rested now. We better get started now. Just a coyote. Oh. Not as big as the sheriff, but better looking. <laughs> well, nothing like an unloaded coat for emergencies. Is this standard equipment for nuns? Well, sure, you don't think I could have used that on the sheriff if it was loaded, do you? I suppose not. We have a long way to go. We better get going, huh? <laughs> Heath, what is it? It could only happen to me. This is all right? Oh, yes, I know, Paco. Maybe he doesn't want to get mixed up with fugitives like us. This is Mission Country Heath. The sisters have worked here for 70 years. Hello? Anybody? Ah, there he is. Bienvenido. Paco. This is my friend, Mr. Barkley. He wants to stay here a few days. Bienvenido, senor. My house is your house. Thank you, Paco. That's very generous. But I think you should know that the sheriff is after me. And so we will hope he does not find you, senor. Please, sit. Sit down, sister. And let me fix you something to eat. Thanks, sir. Well, let me put it this way, ma'am. If you do know where that young nun and Barkley are hiding out, and you're not telling me, well, you can just pack your mule and be off my property by this time tomorrow. I have no knowledge of Sister Jacob's whereabouts. But you do know that she's responsible for a jailbreak, don't you? And she'll be tried as a criminal and sent to prison just the same as him. Oh, God forbid such a thing, Mr. Roberts. But what kind of a person is she? Why would she run off with the likes of him? Well, answer me, ma'am. I am not prepared to answer you at the moment, Mr. Roberts. All I can say concerning Sister Jacob is that in the years I've known her as a postulant, a novice, and a duly professed nun, there has been no breach of discipline. She's been all that we might have asked. Well, you can be telling all that to a warden pretty soon. The 
you break it? Well, I dropped a few beads. I managed to do that about once a month. Think your family will be arriving tomorrow? Well, if they caught that early train to deadlock, and got a fast team. Otherwise, it'll be day after tomorrow. Mm. Paco could find out for you. That'd be a help. What do you see there? I was just thinking about things that probably would be better to forget. Like that picnic we never went on. Picnic? Four years ago, we had a date to go on a picnic. That was the summer you left. You do remember, don't you? Of course I remember. But we agreed that Valentine's Day is over for us. Well, I don't think it'll ever be over for me. Four years ago, I was in love with you. Stop it, he. And with all due respect to your vows and conscience, it still hasn't changed for me. I'm sorry. I hope so. In the future, let's be very careful that you keep these aberrations, let's say, to yourself. Heath, I want to make something very plain to you. I've dedicated myself to God's business. That's what I chose. That's what I want. It doesn't leave a gap to be filled. My only regret is that sometime I attend his business poorly. Or not as well as I'm able. Keith, I'm very fond of you. I'm not offended. That would be foolish. This fire was built some hours ago. Hey, Otto? What? Look at this. Three beads on a chain. What do you make of it? Well, it looks like part of a, whatchamacallit, a, a rosary. It's got to belong to that nun. If we look hard enough, we'll find buggy tracks. You better ride back to town, Combs. The way old man Roberts and Fogarty been itching. They'll want to know about this right away. All right. You two, come with me. Paco's now. Well, I'm not complaining. They smell good. Well, thank you. They're almost done. Do you want to go outside and get Paco? Oh, he'll be right back. He just went to get some water. Mm -hmm. Say, is there anything you nuns can't do? Oh, I can name about a thousand things, but we don't have time. Hey, would you get me those plates over there, please? Mm-hmm. Senor Heat! Senor Heat! Sister! What is it, Paco? Three men come. Forgive me if I've blundered you into this. I'm sorry. It's not your fault, sir.
doing my best. Look at that map. Go on, look at it. I've got men everywhere. Yeah, there's one thing about you, Fogarty. You never run out of it. Look, you... Homer, what do you want from me? All right, here? Homer, what's this all about? Where's he? If I knew where he was, I'd have him roped like a calf. Oh, better yet, I'd have a rope around his neck. What are you talking about? I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Your brother escaped from this jail two days ago. Now he's running for help with some deluded nun because he didn't have the guts to stand for trial. What's he supposed to have done? He was arrested for attempted rape. I don't believe it. There must be some mistake. No. First mistake was made by me, letting that young whelp stay in my house. Victoria, I thought our family were friends. If you did, you're doing your best to change that. I'm doing my best to tell you that the girl was my daughter. You'll believe it when we catch up with him. You see him down on his knees to plead for mercy. I'd like to talk to your daughter. Oh, no, I'm not going to let you torment her, too, or invent some lies you to You know her. better than that. Don't get on your high horse with me, Victoria. Now you listen to me, Roberts, and I'm speaking as my brother's attorney. Before you choke on that bone of righteousness, suppose you tell me why you think Heath broke out of jail. Because he was guilty, of course, and he wouldn't stay in trial. And when is this trial scheduled to be held? It was scheduled for yesterday morning. Yes. Well, we only got the telegraph two days ago. Who was supposed to be here to represent him? Now, you listen to me, Barclay. This is my town. Your brother forgot it. You'd be wise to remember it. Your town. You were going to bring my brother to trial within 24 hours with a boot-licking judge and a hand-picked jury? Before we were able to get here? Why, Homer? Why? What were you afraid of? Mr. Roberts, I think we picked our trail up this time. Why? About a mile west of Bradley Forks. I found this at a place where they stopped. Must have been the nuns. Couldn't possibly be anybody else's. Let's go. What are we waiting for? All right, let's Sarah, go. are you going to arrest my son or murder him at Homer Roberts' request? I'm going to do my job, ma'am. And what is that job, Sheriff? To uphold the law of this town or the sacred privileges of one individual? I don't like the way you're talking. I didn't say it to please you, Sheriff. And now I give you fair warning. I'm going to go out and find Heath. And if you're bent on murder, you're going to have to kill us both. Hold it, Barkley. Don't make it any worse, Sheriff. I'm not going to have him interfering with the law. What law, Sheriff? Hold it, Barkley. Throw him in his brother's cell. Come on. Head out. Just leave him sweat there for a while. 
He ain't going anywhere. Hello, Carla. I'm Victoria Barclay. I'm sure you must remember me. I used to come here when you were much younger, of course. I, I knew your mother quite well. I don't have to talk to you. I don't have to let you in the house. No, I suppose not. But I would like to know what happened. I already told my father and the sheriff. I don't have to tell anyone else. Carla, they've located Heath. Now, if there's been some misunderstanding... There's been no misunderstanding. Are you sure? They could kill my son, you know. It's not my fault what happens. He brought it on himself. I see. Strange, I've never known Heath to do anything like this. He... Well, he must have been terribly attracted to you. Wasn't he? I said I don't want to talk about it. And I don't have to. Was he in love with you? What do you think? Well, I don't know. You are very attractive. Didn't he say so? You're making fun of me. Oh, no, no, Carla. Why would I do anything like that? Because you think you're so much. It's the same as he thinks he's so much. All right, Carla, what really happened? I don't like you, Mrs. Barkley. Now, you leave me alone. I don't intend to. I want the truth. Everybody else believes me. Everybody but you and that nun. Oh, yes, the nun. Now, who is she? Tell me about her. I don't know. Just a nun from the mission on our property. Probably Heath's style. Isn't that a strange thing to say about a nun? I don't know. Stop it or leave me alone. No, no, we can't stop now. Not until we know what's happened. Not until we know the truth. Not the things you dreamed about or wished would happen. Your father is out there now with men ready to kill my son because you lied about what happened. Why should I lie? I've got plenty of bows. You should see them all come courting. I don't need Heath. He was rude. I told him to stop. He became vicious. He, he deserves whatever he gets. Does he, Carla? Does he? And will you be able to live with yourself afterwards? He could have cared about me some. He could have tried. Is that what you wanted? I didn't mean it that way. Making me say things I don't want to say. And when he showed you he didn't care, isn't that when you lied to your father? Because you did lie, didn't you? It hurt so much not to have Heath's attention, you had to lie! I don't know. I don't know. It's all so confused. You and Papa. Papa. Maybe he thinks I should be a nun. Help me. Give up, Barkley! You don't have a chance! And we've got him pinned down. Go on in and get him. I just as soon have him dead as alive. Won't be that easy to get a clean shot at him. No sense rushing things, getting our own men killed. I'll give a hundred dollars for every bullet that's put in Barkley's hide.
for murder in a court you can't buy off. Now, Carla just confessed to me she was lying. Nothing happened with Heath. You're lying now. You know that's not true. Carla is sick, Homer. She needs your help. You've known about it for years, but you've been trying to hide it from yourself. It's not like she says. Tell the men to keep firing. Sheriff, you talk to Carla. She'll tell you the truth. You'd say anything to help him. I'm sorry, Homer. This is as far as I go. I can't help you try to run a bluff any longer. Not at the cost of that boy's life. Combs! Come in over there. Hold your fire. You can go in now, ma'am. Hey! I'm all right. Thank God. The funny thing. Must be the company I've been keeping lately. I had the same thought myself. I don't think we'll have any further problems with Mr. Roberts. Poor man. He was here this morning. Even talked of building us a new school. Seems he had a very fruitful talk with uh, you gentlemen about things in general, and that subject in particular. I don't know which of you to thank more. Well, why not try me, sister, since I'm the more saintly member of the family? As a matter of fact, it's my example that we're all hoping Heath will follow. That's entirely true, sister. Uh, this good man trips over his halo nearly twice a day. <laughs> yes, well, uh, maybe we better find Mother and get started. Yes. Goodbye, sister. Goodbye. Goodbye, sister. Goodbye. God bless you. <laughs> you planning another jailbreak? Oh, for heavens, no. We were just talking. She's really something. No argument for me. If you ever get up near Stockton, I expect you to look in on us. If it's at all possible. Sister, I'm convinced that nothing is impossible for you. Uh, Heath, I'm afraid that train won't wait. Sister? Goodbye. Goodbye, Sarah. Goodbye, Heath. You must have loved him very much at one time, didn't you? Yes, I did. What makes you think I ever stopped? Sarah, that mule hadn't got a chance. He? He? 
Is that you? Really? Well, why not? <laughs> where did you come from? I mean, how in the world... Did I know where to find you? Yes. Well, I asked the right questions. I heard you were doing mission work in this part of the country. And I managed to have business with the Roberts family. It's good to see you, Heath. <laughs> it's wonderful, really. Your uh, sister Jacob now. Sister Jacob, that's a, that's a funny name for a girl. <laughs> oh, I've always thought it was a fine old biblical name. Of course, if you don't like Jacob, you have to take that up with Isaac. Of course, if you don't like Isaac, you have to take it up with Abraham. And if you don't, it gets very complicated after that. <laughs> Robert, so you're chasing. Homer, Homer, cut it out. Come on now. What was that for? No need to spell it out to you, Barkley. You know what that's for. I ought to use a gun on you. Homer, let's keep it legal the way we agreed. You're under arrest. For what? For assaulting my daughter. Are you listening to me? Listening to you? How can I help it? I'm entitled to face that girl and you know it. I heard you the first four or five times. Well, then why hasn't she been brought here? Are you serious? Carla Roberts brought from her father's house to face a wild-eyed rooster like you? Uh-huh. You've got a lot to learn, friend. You'll have a chance to face Carla at your trial. And if this is some kind of a joke, I'll laugh some other time. Mr. Barkley, you are now in Robertsville. You are not back in Stockton with your family to take charge of things for you. Something you just have to get used to. Now, is there anything else? I want to send a telegram. Get your piece of paper. No, I, I don't mean to say that Heath was ever saintly. Such a lie might bring the roof down on our heads. <laughs> but it, he was wild. He was he was unruly and. Like so many of the others, he, he was even willful at times. Thank you. But he was, um, he, he was... <clears throat> this is very difficult to say, sister. Yes, sister. He was never disrespectful in the way that they're trying to suggest. How long has it been since you last saw him? Four years. Four years? Oh, my. That's almost forever when you're young. Men change, you know. The world and the people in it, our poor selves included, are so rarely what we once hoped we might be. Yes, I, I understand that. But just the same, I, I don't believe that Carla Roberts is telling the truth. And I don't mean that's something that I can prove, but I mean, I just know it. I feel it. That just isn't something that Heath would do. Let's try to be realistic. How well did you know this young man? <laughs> Herman? 
Stay with it, Sarah. That mule hadn't got a chance. Is that you? Really? Well, why not? <laughs> where did you come from? I mean, how in the world... Did I know where to find you? Yes. Well, I asked the right questions. I heard you were doing mission work in this part of the country. And I managed to have business with the Roberts family. It's good to see you, Heath. <laughs> it's wonderful, really. You're, uh, Sister Jacob now. Sister Jacob, that's a, that's a funny name for a girl. <laughs> oh, I've always thought it was a fine old biblical name. Of course, if you don't like Jacob, you have to take that up with Isaac. Of course, if you don't like Isaac, you have to take it up with Abraham. And if you don't, it gets very complicated after that. <laughs> So you're chasing. Oh, oh, we're cut it out. Come on now. What was that for? No need to spell it out to you, Barkley. You know what that's for. I ought to use a gun now, on you. Homer, let's keep it legal the way we agreed. You're under arrest. For what? For assaulting my daughter. Are you listening to me? Listening to you? How can I help it? I'm entitled to face that girl, and you know it. I heard you the first four or five times. Well, then why hasn't she been brought here? Are you serious? Carla Roberts, brought from her father's house to face a wild-eyed rooster like you? Uh-huh. You've got a lot to learn, friend. You'll have a chance to face Carla at your trial. And if this is some kind of a joke, I'll laugh some other time. Mr. Barkley, you are now in Robertsville. You are not back in Stockton with your family to take charge of things for you. Something you just have to get used to. Now, is there anything else? I want to send a telegram. Get your piece of paper. No, I, I don't mean to say that Heath was ever saintly. Such a lie might bring the roof down on our heads. <laughs> but it, he was wild. He was he was unruly and. Like so many of the others, he, he was even willful at times. Thank you. But he was, um, he, he was... <clears throat> this is very difficult to say, sister. Yes, sister. He was never disrespectful in the way that they're trying to suggest. How long has it been since you last saw him? Four years. Four years? Oh, my. That's almost forever when you're young. Men change, you know. The world and the people in it, our poor selves included, are so rarely what we once hoped we might be. Yes, I, I understand that. But just the same, I, I don't believe that Carla Roberts is telling the truth. And I don't mean that's something that I can prove, but I mean, I just know it. I feel it. That just isn't something that Heath would do. Let's try to be realistic. How well did you know this young man? Well enough to have married him if I hadn't chosen to become a nun. I see. Sister, you'd have to have known Heath to, to understand. I mean, he... he 
he was wild and he was headstrong and he, and sometimes he felt like he belonged to no one. And of course, those were the times when he, he was most lost. But he, he was always gentle. 